Hey, welcome back to my channel. I'm Teacher Tan. Today, in my video, I will explain what is mass spectrometer, what information we can get from mass spectrum, and again, I will show step by step on how to determine average atomic mass of an element. In previous video, I have explained on how to determine the average atomic mass of an element. To determine the average atomic mass of an element, we not just need the atomic mass of each isotope, but also we need the relative abundance of each isotope. So how do we get the relative abundance of each isotope to determine the average atomic mass of an element? For instance, how do we know that the percentage abundance of chlorine 35 and chlorine 37 are 75 76% and 24.24% respectively? So the answer is using mass spectrometry. So mass spectrometry is a technique for us to identify the component in a substance and also the relative abundance of each component in the substance. This is mass spectrometer, a device or machine that is usually used in mass spectrometry. So in mass spectrometer, first there is a compartment for us to put the sample and then the sample will be heated and become gas and the sample then will be bombarded with electron beam to ionize the sample. So the ions formed then will be accelerated through a strong electric field and then deflated by the magnetic field before reaching the detector at the end. The detector usually will be connected to a computer to get the mass spectrum. How can the component in a sample be separated? So basically, they are being separated through deflections in the magnetic field. The components will be deflected in magnetic field differently depends on the mass to charge ratio. So there are two factors that will influence the deflections of the component of a sample in the magnetic field. The first factor is the mass of the ion and the second factor is the charge of the ion. So if the ions component is heavier, so heavier, larger inertia means that the ions will move slower and therefore being deflected less in the magnetic field. For the lighter ions, so less inertia, so usually will move faster and will be deflected more by the magnetic field and therefore separated with the heavier components. After passing through the magnetic field, all the ions will reach the detector. The detector usually is connected to a computer and then will produce a mass spectrum. So this is the examples of mass spectrum that you can get. So our samples here is magnesium and in magnesium, there are three naturally occurring isotopes magnesium 24, magnesium 25, and magnesium 26. And each of these isotopes having different isotopic mass. So because they are having different masses, that's why when passing through the magnetic field, they will be deflected differently to give three different peaks on the mass spectrum. So from the mass spectrum, what information that we usually can get? So the first one is how many isotopes present in the sample. Like for magnesium, there are three peaks, means that there are three different isotopes present in magnesium. And the second information that we can get is the relative abundance of each isotope. Can you see that in this mass spectrum, magnesium 24 having the percentage abundance of 78.99%. So we can read it from the mass spectrum. And for magnesium 25, the percentage abundance is 10% and for magnesium 26 is 11.01%. From the mass spectrum, 
we could get the information regarding on the relative abundance of each isotopes. And if we have the isotopic mass of each isotope, that means that we can calculate the average atomic mass for magnesium. Basically, there are two steps to follow through to calculate the average atomic mass of an element. Step number one is to construct a table to fill in information such as isotopic mass for each isotope and also their abundance. For instance, magnesium has three isotopes, magnesium 24, magnesium 25 and magnesium 26. So we must have rows in the table to fill in atomic mass and abundance for each of the isotope. For this example, we are not being given the isotopic mass of each isotope of magnesium. So if you are not being given the isotopic mass for each isotope, then you can assume the isotopic mass of each isotope is equal to the nucleon number. Must remember, you can only assume this when you are not being given the isotopic mass of each isotope. But if you are being given, then you must use the exact mass for each of the isotopes. And for abundance, in this example, it's given percentage abundance. So we record down the percentage abundance of each isotope. But must remember, in the mass spectrum, not necessarily all the time being given percentage abundance. It can give in terms of relative intensity or even the peak height. But whether it's relative intensity or peak height, they are all considered as abundance, so can be written down in the abundance row. Step number two, just need to substitute all the information into the formula to give us the average atomic mass of magnesium, which is equal to 24.32 U.